church. This morning's scripture will be coming from Psalms 12 verses 1 through 5 and it reads on this wise, help Lord for no faithful one remains. The loyal have disappeared from the human race. They lie to one another. They speak with flattering lips and deceptive hearts. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks boastfully. They say through our tongues we have power. Our lips are our own who can be our master. Because of the oppression of the afflicted and the groaning of the poor, I will now rise up, says the Lord. I will put in a safe place the one who longs for it. So this read for you Psalms 12, verses 1 through 5. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearer, readers, and doers of his word. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to continue. An old familiar song. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, thy weary one, lay down, thy head upon my breath. Yeah. 
came to Jesus as I was weary, wounded, and sad. I came to Father, which are in heaven? Thy master, we bow again before thee. With a humble heart of expression, and say thank you, dear Lord. Through all the ups, all the downs, thank you, dear Lord. We want to thank you, dear Father, for last night's rest. This morning, early rise. Let our lives rather than live while longer, Father. We come to praise and to worship, Father. Because these obstacles that we are faced with, we can't do them ourselves. So we come to humble ourselves before you, Father, and seek your holy guidance that we might be uplifted. And we might inspire another because the journey is just so hard, Father. We can't make it alone. So we come before you today, Father. Thank you for this journey with thee. All the work, all the love, all the compassion, the suffering that thou have performed for us. We thank you, Father. We realize this, Master, there's much sickness among us. But we put it in your hands, Father. We just can't get around it. But your hand holds it, Father. Thank you, dear Lord. There is bereavement too, Father. We know that it's in good hands, but yet it hurts our hearts. So we surrender and say thank you for your comfort, your inspiration, the understanding, Lord. Yesterday, we didn't know we were going to be alike. But your hand held us once again, Father. Not only that held us, but put in your pressure bosom. Shield us from hurt, harm, and danger. This is a mean world, Lord. But the hand of mercy supersedes all harm. So we come to bow before you today and worship your holy name. Thank you for the gospel. The right directions. Give us light. It grants us strength that we can endure no matter what comes our way. 
going to keep on trusting in your father. Though the way might get a little dim. But we have heard the word that says, the earth is the Lord. And the fullness thereof. And all that they dwell therein. So we put it in your hands, Father. We trust you. Believe in you. Down through the years, Lord, you've been so good to us. We have endured so much, Father. And yet we have risen. Oh, thank you, Lord. The Lord, there's a sickness on the land. These diseases, Father, don't seem like they want to rest. But we're not worried, Father. Thank you for your healing. The assurance that it's going to be well. Thank you, Lord. The Father, bless our homes. Give us clarity there, Father. Understanding. Peace of heart. Then our church. The building, of course. Bless it, Father. That we might grow into your grace and your knowledge. We just ask for understanding and wisdom, Father. And then, Lord, our pastor. Bless his home and bless him, Father. He has a tall order. Nobody knows but he and D. And some of it, even he don't know. But grace, grace knows. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lead and continue to guide us, Father. For it's thy servant's prayer. Pray in thy son Jesus' name. Forever, amen, and thank God. Well, Lord, had undone, oh Lord, had undone now, Lord, had undone, had undone what you told me to do, well, Lord, had undone, oh Lord, had undone now, Lord. Shout, Lord, I done that too. I done done what you told me to do. Well, Lord, I done done now, Lord. I done done, oh Lord. I done done, I done done what you told me to do. Lord, you told me to shout, Lord, I done that. Oh
Good morning, Mount Calvary. Good morning, Mount Calvary. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when it said unto me, let us go into the house. I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. For he has been good, he has been kind, and he has been merciful to us. I'd ask everyone, please stand for our call to worship this morning. It's good to see Dr. Cochran here. Amen. Amen. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Keep silence, keep silence before him. Reverend Cain will come with our invocation. Most gracious and heavenly Father, once again with your humble service come before thee, Father God. Lord, just thanking you for yet another day, Father. We thank you for the safe passage that you gave us as we made our way here today. Father, we thank you for the safe passage that you gave us as we went down to Alabama and came back last night. Through the rain and the storm, Lord, you took care of us. You watched over us. You made sure that we made it there safely and made it back safely, Father God. And we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for all those who are constantly going through different things, depression, Lord, going through the fact that they're in the hospital sick, Lord. We place them in your most capable hands, Father God, because we know that you could do anything but fail, Father God, and we know that you can heal one way or another, Father God. So we thank you for it, Father God, whether you heal them on this side or the other side, Lord. We know that they will be healed because you will heal them, Lord, and we thank you for that in advance, Father God. We lift up those who are incarcerated to you right now, Father God, because they need you even more. Because a lot of times all they hear is the wrong voices going through their heads, Father God. But they need to hear the voice of Jesus and know who can save them, Father God. Who can turn them around, Lord. So we thank you for that, Father. We lift up the homeless to you right now, Father God. Those who are just sick and shut in totally, Lord. Lord, we all need you more and more each and every day, Father God. Father God, but we ask that you open up our hearts and let us hear the word that you have given the man to bring to us this morning, Father God, because we know the word that he will bring came straight from you, Lord. And we thank you right now in advance for the word, Father God, because that's the most important part of our worship service is hearing what thus says the Lord, Father. And we thank you for that. Now, Lord, continue to have your way with Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. Lord, continue to watch over the whole entire congregation, Lord, and help us to do the things that are pleasing to thee. We ask you for the forgiveness of all our sins, over mission and commission, Father God, because when we sin, we only sin against thee. Lord, now just have us to enjoy this worship service as we worship you here today. In Jesus' most holy and magnificent and precious name, we do pray. Amen, 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 amen and amen. amen. As we continue with our worship service, Congregation of Hymn this morning can be found in your hymn notes, page 249. Blessed assurance, for I know that Jesus is mine. is mine Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine and of salvation purchase of God born of his spirit washed in his blood This is my story this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Verse 2. Visions of rest. 
captured now burst on my side. Angels descending, rain from above. Angels of mercy, this is my story. This is my song. Our responsive reading would be led by Reverend Henderson. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Responsive reading of 575, The Christian Family. It's coming from Ephesians 521 through 6, 1 through 4. It was read responsively. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let their wives be to their own husband in everything. Husbands, love your wives, mm -hmm. even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So all men to love their wives and their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished it and cherished it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his, of his flesh, flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. All together, and ye father, Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Amen. The Lord had a blessing to the reading of his holy word. You may be seated. Amen. We'll now have a musical selection from the Cavalry Covenant Choir.
that's all right. That's all right. Jesus will fix it. Jesus, he will fix it. Jesus, he will fix it. After a while, Jesus, trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I had to cry sometimes. I had to cry sometimes. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I had to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. That's all right. That's all yeah. right. Hey, you will fix it. Jesus, he will fix it. Jesus will fix it. Jesus, he will fix it. Jesus will fix it. Jesus, he will fix it. After a while. How many of y'all know that Jesus will fix it? He may not come when you want it, but he's always on time. He'll fix it. All you got to do is ask. When he show up, he always shows out. Amen. We'll have our news and announcements, Miss April Schwein. Good morning, Mount Calvary. Amen. Amen. And indeed, I want to say welcome to each and every one of you, but to especially our visitors. And if we have anyone visiting with us this morning, we're going to ask if you would stand right where you are so we can extend to you some Mount Calvary love this morning. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, the entire Mount Calvary family welcomes you this morning. We are delighted that you have chosen to worship with us. We pray that our service this morning will be a blessing to you. And we invite you to come again. Thank you. Amen. 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 Let us continue to be in prayer for each other, but especially our sick and shut-in members. James 5.16 reminds us that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I see Sister Lakisa Stafford this morning. <laughs> And when I say, you talk about the power of prayer. When I came up the stairs this, um, to do the announcement, I said, that's Keisha Scooter right there. I said, oh, Lord, have mercy. She's in the sanctuary. Praise God. Amen. Amen. It is so good to see you in Mount Calvary. We don't stop praying because she's here. Amen. We continue our prayers. My son says thank you for your prayers, okay, because he's at home. Um, appetite has returned. Amen. So prayer works. Amen. Hey. <laughs> prayer works. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. Oh, we can stay right there all day, but all right. We know that Bible study continues this week. Join us on Zoom at 7 p.m. as we study the book of Ephesians. You have no excuses. You have a handout in your bulletin. So if you forgot your homework paper, amen, make sure you are ready. Y'all know y'all's um, teacher been studying. Amen. And Ephesians has been a good study, so please join us. Immediately after morning worship services, dance team members, parents, and the Calvary Mothers Board are going to collaborate. Amen. It's a meeting in classroom number two. Amen. So angels in motion, mother's board. Amen. Classroom number two after service. Let's wait to see what the Lord does with that. Amen. <laughs> ministry leaders, please be prepared to share information on your 2024 ministry plans. We have a leadership meeting this Saturday, February 3rd at 10 a.m. Golden Age invites Calvary members 50 and older to their fellowship on Saturday, February 10th at 10 a.m. And then the Singles Ministry will hold its pre-Valentine celebration on Sunday, February 11th, following morning worship. Amen. Refreshments will be served for the Singles Ministry. Let's put that out. Y'all don't go down there and get food if you're not single. Amen. <laughs> Take your husband or your wife to get something to eat. Amen. Singles are invited to this fellowship. More information, you can contact Sister Pat Briggs. Couples, get ready for the next couples ministry meetup. Stay tuned for details concerning the couples weekend brunch. That will take place on Saturday, February 17th. And your homework is due. Everybody got homework. So get ready to spill the tea. Amen. The Mother's Board of Mount Calvary will celebrate their 2024 anniversary on Sunday, 
February 18th at 11 a.m. Amen. Calvary family and friends, you are invited to worship with these saints who demonstrate what it means to be chosen to serve. Amen. Calvary High School seniors, remember that the application window for the Robert W. Crumb Memorial Scholarship will open in May. Be sure to review the eligibility criteria found on the church website, or you can contact a member of the scholarship committee. Thank you to the ministry leaders who submit their information to the information ministry in a timely manner to be submitted for the announcements. Amen. Follow us on Facebook if you're not already doing so, so you can help us share the gospel by liking, commenting, and sharing our posts. Before the birthdays, I do have a thank you card that was slipped to me, so it says, bless you for your kindness. Dear Mount Calvary Family and Mother's Board, thank you so much in showing me your amazing love of kindness with my gift. May God continue to bless you. I pray to see everyone soon. I also appreciate your phone calls. Thank you for your continuous love, Mother Ollie Patton and family. Amen. 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 Happy, happy birthday to everyone who is celebrating this week, January 28th through February 3rd. If you're here, will you stand or raise your hand? Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. <laughs> Amen. Happy birthday to somebody else. Who? Happy birthday. Oh, young folk have birthdays. Amen. That's what a cake is. Amen. Happy birthday, young one. God bless you both to see many, many more. Our thought for this week, don't put a question mark where God has put a period. Amen. Church said amen. amen. Good morning to you, Mount Calvary. Truly, we give God praise for another Sunday morning. We thank God for this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. So we welcome all of those who are in the sanctuary physically and those who are joining us in our virtual sanctuary. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church and to our visitors. Thank God for you. We're so glad that you came to fellowship with us. And we pray that something will be said or done to lift your spirits and just cause you to leave this place trusting God just a little bit more. And we hope that you would have this opportunity to fellowship with us and to love on us and as we love on you so that you can know that we're serious about our worship with God. And to the rest of us, as I did last week, somebody you ain't spoke to this morning, so look down your road, tell somebody, say good morning. Good morning. Turn your head the other way and look the other way and tell somebody over there, good morning. All right, now we have eliminated the you didn't speak to me today. Amen. So we ain't going to leave out of here mad at nobody. Amen. But we do thank God for our time of fellowship together today. Um, and to all of those who are celebrating birthdays, truly happy birthday to you. And we pray that God will bless you, bless you to see many, many more. We celebrate with you uh, in spirit. We are here with you. And, but make sure you take care of yourself. Amen. I know you over there, little man. I, I see you with the phone right now. But for your birthday, request something, Doc. Request a cake or something. I, I ask for something. Hey, the parents looking at me like, what? Get you something for the birthday, man. At least ask. You have not? Because <laughs> you ask now. <laughs> but happy birthday again to those of you who are celebrating birthdays. And I... Uh, no, we got we got some folk here on this front row didn't stand up, but y'all know they family anyway. My niece and my god kids and my nephew, uh, the Flanders family. God bless. So glad to have them with us on uh, today. Some of y'all may not have seen the new edition, Evan. Amen. That's that's the man of the house now. Man number two, should I say? Amen. But thank God for having them here today. And I want to pause right here and say thank you, Mount Calvary, for yesterday. Amen. For that trip to the Legacy Museum over. And come on, give God praise just for that opportunity. Man, what an experience. Um, I didn't get to go through the whole thing like some of us did. We, we, I got to go back. I, I got to finish it. Um, just so much that's there. Um, and I got to tell you my, my quick testimony for me. Um, I, I had my one, it, it got me one time, Sister Brown. I, I had to sit down. Amen. When we look back at what we've been through as a people. But the thing that broke me or, or caused me to pause, I was sitting there listening to the voices the car came and listening to the stories 
and um, as you get ready to leave out of one section going to another you can sit on a bench and there's this hologram of a woman singing walk with me Lord to make it through the Lord had to do it and I'm so glad, as I was talking with the ministers back in the back, that our God does not change. He can still help us today if you need help, just like I ancestors. Just say, Lord, walk with me. Talk with me. Keep me. And God will take care of us. Amen. But we do want to be prayerful again uh, again thank you for those Reverend Henderson so much for putting all that together the trip and everything uh, thank you so much our youth we had about 22 23 of our children that were there and experienced it and the adults that went uh, thank you all so much and um, also don't forget Saturday leadership meeting uh, if you're leading a ministry be here 10 o'clock on Saturday morning let us go through our meeting for the first quarter that we can discuss what we need to. But I, I, I want to get to this part of, of being prayerful for one another. Um, let's be prayerful for uh, Deacon Freeman and his family. Um, he's not here. I think it's his aunt, his sister, his sister um, was placed in hospice care. Um, but we're still praying. As I told the ministers in the back, God always has the last say so. And we still going to trust God at what he can do and will do. And not only Deacon Freeman and his family, but we want to continue to be prayerful for Sister Dana Watkins. Kind of similar situation. That the doctors aren't treating they're just kind of waiting um, my understanding that she may be going to a hospice as well soon that's one of our members that's part of our family but we not gonna stop praying we gonna pray all the way up until the Lord answers one way or another uh, but we do thank God for um, Corey Swain, LaCorey, who's home now. Amen. We've been praying for him. We thank God for Dr. Jax. I think he's still in rehab, if I'm not mistaken. We want to keep praying for Dr. Jax as well, as well as Reverend Williams as well. He's also in a rehab facility as well. So we know that these are seasoned preachers that God has used for many years. Um, so we want to pray their strength um, in the Lord that God will bless them. But also be prayerful for Reverend Kane, um, as well as Deacon Thrash, um, who both lost uh, family members um, on this week. So let's pray that God will help them during their difficult time with their families. Um, and Mount Calvary, I always tell you, if it ain't knocked on your door, just keep living. Because man that is born of a woman it's but a few days they're full of trouble but we know that it shall impact all of us and before I move on I just gotta personally give God praise for Sister Lakisa Stafford Amen. we've been praying we've been praying We've been praying on Wednesday. We've been praying on Sundays. And, and when she said her desire, y'all heard that? Her desire was to step foot back in the house of God. Don't tell me God won't answer prayer. Are you? She may not be 100%, but God still gave her her desire. She wanted to come to church, and today she is in the house of God. So we thank and praise God that he reminds us that there's nothing too hard for him. We just have to let our requests be made known. Just don't doubt what God can do. 
And the only thing that is is just a reassurance to me of what God can do. If he can do that, he can do something else. If he healed her, he can heal the next person. If he brought her through, he can bring the next person through. So as believers, we got to trust in God by looking at how he's blessed all of us. Thank you, Jesus. And we'll be calling out some more names during our altar prayer. Those that are on our sick list. Um, but God shows us time and time again. If you trust me, all things are possible. If you can just trust me and don't doubt me. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask now if our deacons will come as we prepare to continue to worship God in the arena of giving. Um, I know some of y'all, so we got to keep your eye on the clock, Pastor. It's, it's, it's football day. Amen. We ain't, we ain't gonna be long. Y'all y'all see I'm I'm dressed a little different today. Amen. I, I ain't trying to be here long enough. <laughs> but I thank God because I had a had ministry bought these for me for my pastoral anniversary. I'm like, I'm wearing my shirts to church. I I like my Mount Calvary logo and I love the name my mom and daddy gave me. I'm I'm, I'm wearing my stuff. Amen. And thank God. And sometimes it's good to just relax. Because I got a feeling that the, what I wear don't determine how I preach. Hello, somebody. So let us prepare to give now as the Lord has blessed us. We know that God loves a cheerful giver. So as we give to the Lord today, make sure you do it with a smile on your face. Not grudgingly, not of necessity. Because God loves a cheerful giver. So I'm going to ask if we would all stand. And if we would follow the direction of our ushers. As we cheerfully come to the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. God bless you. And ever, and ever, for all you've done for me, me, blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Oh, just want to thank you forever and ever and ever. For all you done for me, blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Anybody overlooked or omitted? If so, just wave your hand. If not, let us all stand in the presence of the Lord this morning as we would have our offertory prayer lifted by Deacon Dr. Smith. Uh, let us pray. Father in heaven, we again thank you for being in your house one more time. Thank you, Lord, for being able to gather as believers in your word and to be able to attest to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God, we pray for the gifts that have been given, Lord, uh, that will be uh, given back to you, Lord, so that they can multiply your kingdom, so that we can continue to tell the world about your loving son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, it's with these gifts, we give thanks to you. And in Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. All things come of thee. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. You may 
may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And again, thank you for your faithfulness in giving, knowing that God will bless you for every sacrifice that you make. Mount Calvary, it is time for us to have a talk with our Heavenly Father. This is the time of our altar prayer. Um, a lot of times, mothers, people come into the house of the Lord with things on their heart. Sometimes people come in just out of tradition. But we got to remember when we start our service, we chant and we say, the Lord is in his holy temple. God is here. And whatever you need, God's got it. Not a formality of worship but a talk with God not to try to appease people not to put on as ancestors say a show to the outside world but a talk with God song says tell him all about your troubles You'll hear your humble cry and God will answer by and by. So this part of our service is truly holy and sacred because at this point we have this opportunity to bring our concerns to the throne of God. Because whatever you walked in with, God already knew about it. And I have found out in my walk with God that sometimes God won't stir that thing up until it's time for you to talk to him. So if it's stirring up in you right now, it's because God wants you to talk to him about it. So with our altar prayer. I'm going to ask if we would all stand. And for those who would like to bring your cares and your concerns to the altar of God, you can come down. And here's the thing. It's not my altar. It ain't Mount Calvary's altar. This is the place that we have dedicated to God. And whatever your needs are, he said, I will supply all your needs. Whatever your desires are, he said, let your request be made known. And we do have those that are on our sick and shut in. And we want to be prayerful. Again, for Deacon Freeman, his family. Pray for his sister. We pray for Sister Dana Watkins. Thank God for little Corey. I want to keep praying for Dr. Jackson, Reverend Williams, Reverend Kane, and Deacon Thrash. Keep praying for Mother Stewart, Mother Simmons. Deacon and Deaconess Anderson continue to pray for him. Sister Kathy Mosley, Brother Moses Dallas. Again, thanking God for Sister Stafford. And whatever your concerns are, Brother Richard Nelson, we lift him up. But whatever you got going on, when you bow your head, forget about everything else. And you take that concern to God. And I stand on the word of God. 
that God will not leave you when things are hard. And if you need help, I challenge you to call on him right now. And I promise you, God won't leave you standing by yourself. So my ex Reverend Stevens, if he would come before the throne of grace to take us in corporate prayer. And if you don't mind holding somebody's hand, connect with them. Kind of squeeze it a little bit, let them know I'm finna pray for you. Because God told us we should pray one for another. So I'm going to ask Irvin Stevens to come. Trusting in the Lord that God will answer prayer. Shall we pray? Our Father, our God, it's once again that we come bowed around your altar, God. Firstly, Lord, to tell you thank you, God. Father, we're grateful that you've allowed us to see another day, God. For there were some that were better than us that didn't wake up this morning, God. But Lord, we want to tell you thank you for letting our golden moments roll on just a little while longer, God. Father, we're grateful, Lord, not only that you let us live, God, but we're grateful that you gave us a mind and a heart to come out to the house of worship, Lord. For Lord, there were some that woke up that didn't have a thought in their mind about church, God. But Lord, we thank you that you've given us the opportunity to come and cast all of our cares on you, God. Father, we're gathered around your altar, God, and some may be troubled in their mind, God. Some may be troubled in their heart, God, but we thank you that you are a heart fixer and a mind regulator, God. Father, we thank you right now, God, that we can come and give you all of our cares and concerns, God, because your word says that you care for us, God. Father, now we come lifting up all of the names that have been called out before you, God. Father, you know all the sicknesses, you know all the conditions, God, and you know all of the situations, Father. And Father, we ask right now, Lord, that you would move like you see fit, Father. Father, we come right now, God, touching and agreeing, Lord, and thanking you for your word, God, that by your stripes we are healed, God. Father, we know that healing may not always be on this side, God, but Lord, we thank you, God, that you are able to do all things things but fail God father we come leaning and depending and trusting on your word God knowing that you're too wise to make a mistake and too just to do us wrong father so Lord we just want to tell you thank you God father we thank you right now God for healing God father we thank you for deliverance God father we thank you for breaking chains God we thank you God for setting us free but above all God we thank you for the blood of Jesus God father we thank you for the blood of Jesus that breaks every chain God that binds and breaks every yoke God we thank you right now God for sending him down through 42 generations to die on a cross for us God we're unworthy God but you saw fit God to let it happen and God we just want to tell you thank you God God if we had 10,000 tongues we couldn't tell you thank you enough because you've been so good God Father we thank you God for this your church called Mount Calvary Lord Father, we thank you for everybody that's in leadership positions, God. God, we lift them up every ministry before you right now, God. Father, we pray that you would have your way in this house, in this ministry, in our lives, God. Father, then we come lifting up our pastor before you, God. Touch him right now, God, as he prepares to preach your word, Lord. Lord, you said in your word, God, that the oil runs down from the head even into the beard, God. We pray right now, Lord, that you would bless the head, God. We pray right now, God, that you would open up our minds and our hearts to understanding so, God, that as the seeds of your word fall, they would find good ground. Father, we lift up not only our pastor, but his family, his wife before you, God. Father, we pray that you would just continue to bless her as she blesses him, Father. Father, we thank you right now, God, for everything that you're doing in the life of this church, God. Father, we pray right now, God, that you would just give us more opportunity to share, to show somebody the love that you've shown us, God. For Lord, you didn't say that it would be by, by quoting scripture that people would know that we're your disciples, but God, you said it would be by the love that we have for one another. So God, right now, God, in the words of the old hymn, Father, bind us together with bands of love that cannot be broken, God. 
And Father, if you do this for us, we'll always be mindful and careful to give your name all the praise and all the glory. Father, we pray right now, God, just one more time, Lord, for all of those who are sick, Father. For all of those who have ailments in their body, Father. We come right now touching and agreeing, God, that your healing virtue will flow even now, God. We thank you, God, and we praise you. It's in the name that is above every other name, the only name given under heaven whereby man must be saved in the name of Jesus our Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Another musical selection by the Cabaret Choir. Amen.
bless the Lord. Come on, come on, bless the Lord. Your worship, if your worship is for real, why don't you just give God praise? Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. My worship. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. They say that's the highest praise, so I had to get some of it. I'm saying now. Yes, my worship. Mm -hmm. My worship. Thank you, Jesus. You've been good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. It's for real. It's for real. It is for real. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Because my worship, my worship is for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dear God, our Father, I pray that you would receive our praises to you. God, because our worship is for real. You've been good to us. You've been good to us. And we worship you. Angels bow before you. Says heaven and earth even adore you. But God, today we worship you. And we worship you for being God. In God alone. Thank you that we have to worship no one but you. 
you're a jealous God so Lord today we give it all to you accept our praise to you accept our worship to you but now Lord speak to us by way of your word increase our worship Take us deeper, God, in our praise. That even, Lord, when nobody else is around, we can still say, my worship is for real. Bless our time in your word. Speak to us, for we need a word from you. Help us to live the way you desire for us to live. Lord, I pray as David, pray that the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. You're my strength. God, you're my redeemer in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. There's a word from the Lord today. Um, I'm really trying not to belabor you long, but the Holy Ghost just do what he does. I, I, I often say sometimes being in the presence of the Lord kind of do stuff you just don't expect. And it just feels good when you know God is with you. Turn with me to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and I want to just briefly today deal with um, the total ministers in the back you know sometimes God has to give you a word for what you're dealing with uh, because yesterday shook me up a little bit and sometimes God have to give us a word to help us keep moving forward. Second Timothy chapter 3. I'm going to begin reading at verse 10. I'm going to read just a couple of verses. It says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecution, Afflictions which came unto me in Antioch, in Iconium, and Lystra. What persecution I endured. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Yes, in all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. I want to talk to you briefly from the subject of dealing with our difficult days. Dealing with our difficult days. Mount Calvary, I have said on several occasions that all of us are going to experience some difficult times in our lives. But I also come to the conclusion that not only will we experience difficult times, but we'll also experience some difficult people. Am I right about it? Uh, but difficult times don't normally come with warning notices. Difficult situations just kind of show up. None of us are exempt from coming face to face with difficult times, difficult people, and even perilous tests but 
James said, count it all joy. When you face tests and trials in your life. Mount Calvary, I found out that there are some people who will put your faith to the test. There are some situations that will put your faith to the test. Even there's some times that you can live in that can put your faith to the test. Y'all pray with me just a little bit. When I, we were over in Alabama and I was reading some of the things that our ancestors went through. Their faith was put to the test. And sometimes we have this situation or mindset that I'd rather have this problem than that problem, but I don't care how you label it, a problem is a problem. They had some challenging problems. But when you look and you read and you listen through the anticles of their experiences, through it all, they still trust God. Yes, we're going to have some difficult times. We're going to face some difficult people. There's some folk who going to test you with their psycho and socio-analytical concepts going to come and try to what I often say outsmart you to the preachers in the back man is smart but thank God that man don't have the last say so because the created is never smarter than the creator. And I'm glad that I was created in the image of my creator. In essence, he gave me some of his qualifications. He gave me the ability to reason He, because he can reason. He gave me the ability to think and make decisions because he can think and make decisions. But there's some things that he possesses that I just don't have. See, I can know what's going on with me, but I can't know what's going on with you. In essence, I'm not omniscient. He is. I'm not omnipresent. He is. I'm not all-knowing. God is. But I thank God that even when the world tries to test us, we got to maintain our faith. Even in Paul's letter to Timothy, Paul understood faith-testing challenges. And as I said a minute ago, you're going to be tested too. Because if you trust God, I'm going to say it again because that's, that's the preface, that's the handle on it. If you trust God, you're going to be tested too. I know I can get some witnesses there because there's somebody done talked about you because you trust God. There's somebody don't speak to you no more because you trust God. There's somebody done threw your name out there and been talking about you like crazy. Why? Because you trust God. Paul told Timothy, boy, I done been through it. And he warns Timothy even in verse number one that perilous times will come. How many times I tell you we all want to be loved, but there's going to come a time that somebody you're going to come face to face with don't love you. And you don't, don't you lead, lose no sleep trying to figure out why somebody don't like you. Hello, somebody. Somebody just ain't going to like you because they don't like you. Can I get a witness there that somebody just ain't going to like you because Jill the color of your hair. They don't like you. 
Because the shoes you wear, they don't like you. So don't you lose no sleep. Worrying yourself about while other folks feel some kind of way about you. Paul says that your faith will be tested. And you're going to experience some perilous times. Paul highlights and continue this idea that moral and ethical decay is going to continue in humanity the closer we get to the return of Christ. What are you trying to say, Pastor? Men going to get worse and worse the closer it get to Christ returning. How many of you done sat back in your life and looked back how it used to be? Y'all remember when things used to be just simple? It almost like ain't nothing simple no more. Yeah. Ain't nothing simple. Opening a car door these days ain't simple no more. Because they got keypads on them. You got to punch in numbers to get in. Things just aren't simple anymore. But Paul says that man will continue to get worse. But can, can I read something for you? In chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse, from the beginning of verse 1, look what Paul says. He says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now, if you know anybody like this, if you write in your Bible, you can put a little check box. I know somebody like that. Hello, somebody. Now, Paul talked about the times. He said, the times are be going to become perilous. And when the time become perilous, this is the sign of times becoming perilous when people start acting like this. He says, men shall be lovers of their own selves. They shall be covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, uh-oh, Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truce breakers, false accusers, um, inconsistent, which means that there's no self-control, fierce, despisers of those things which are good, traitors, heady, High-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. But look what Paul told Timothy. From such, these things turn away. Stay away from them kind of folk and I don't know about you when I went through that list there's some things that I can check off and if I would just be honest I was a couple of them check off marks amen the transparency is good but being honest and realistic I kind of saw a little of myself in some of those things but when we look at this, and even though the, 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 the complete fulfillment of this portion that Paul is writing about is not going to be completely fulfilled during the time of the great uh, tribulation, but we can see a foreshadowing of some of it now. We know folk like that. But what about this text, Pastor? What, what, what are you trying to say about dealing with these difficult days? Well, well the central idea of the text this morning is, is, is that we are to avoid ungodly examples and look to God's word to guide us through difficult times. That's the central idea. But what's my proposition to you? What, what, what is my challenge that I'm placing to you? Well, the challenge is that we too must avoid ungodly examples. And we too got to trust God's word when we face with challenging times. 
I'm going to hit a little background. I'm going to give you three points so I'm going to be done. Paul wrote this to Timothy. His farewell letter. He, 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 he writes this as his farewell letter to his young protege that he had been training and teaching in ministry, preparing him to continue uh, to lead. And he wrote it a couple of weeks before he was beheaded by King Nero. But Paul warns and encouraged Timothy regarding the challenges, look, that are yet to come. You think you done been through something, keep living. Hello, somebody. Anybody ever been through something and soon as you come out of something, you go into something else? Amen. And you work and you twist and you turn and you fight your way out of that. And as soon as you get a good foot out of that, something else show up and then you in the middle. Something else. Paul tells Timothy, he said, I'm encouraging you. You got to hold on in these changing and challenging times that we're in. But in more, more, more immediate context, he was challenging Timothy with this thing because for four years, Timothy had already been sitting in as the pastor of the churches over in Ephesus. He had been leading the churches in Ephesus and some false teachers had come in and start challenging Timothy's leadership. They began to challenge his faith in what he was teaching, and Paul had to tell Timothy, boy, it's going to get worse. But ain't it good to know that God got a word? For when things get bad, you don't have to lay in it. Just know that God, you said that I got to go through some stuff. Just help me to make it through. I just want to look at a couple of principles on how we like Timothy can survive these perilous times and how to deal with our difficult days. Well, the first thing I want you to see in this text is that Paul tells Timothy, don't be discouraged. When troubling times come, don't, don't be discouraged because he uses in verse number eight. Well, go with me to verse number eight in chapter three. He says, now Janus and Jambres withstood Moses. He gives this example. So do these also resist the truth. He said, men of corrupt mind, reprobate concerning faith. He says, but they mm, shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be manifested unto all men as theirs also was. Look, Paul tells Timothy, he said, don't you be discouraged. And he uses Moses' example to tell Timothy to hang in there when you start feeling inadequate when folks start talking about you. When your days start getting difficult and the times start getting perilous, he's hang on in there and keep trusting God. Now, your perilous time may not look like my perilous time. Your difficult time might not look like my difficult time. You, you may go through something that I may not go through. You may be in the middle of something right now and you're trying to ask God, Lord, where do I go? How do I get out of it? I'm in the middle of something. God says, don't be discouraged. In essence, don't lose your faith in God. He, he, he gives this example, uh, Jennies and Jambres. Uh, these names are not even mentioned in the Old Testament, but extra biblical material shows us that these were pharaohs, magicians, and sorcerers. Y'all remember when Moses had to go before Pharaoh and every time Moses did something, the, the magicians would do something. And, and this is what they were doing. They were challenging Moses' authority from God. And, and, and Paul gives Timothy this thing. He said, just like they challenge Moses, they going to challenge you. Hello, believers. Just like the, the, like, 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 like the scribes and the Pharisees challenge Jesus, the enemy going to challenge you. I'm going to move a little closer because I'm going to hit home in a minute. I'm going to knock this thing out of pause. Somebody going to say amen in a minute. Somebody done ask you why you believe what you believe. How can you trust a God you ain't never seen? How, how can you believe in a God that let this happen and, and let that happen? Where is your God in the midst of all of this trying to make you doubt? What you believe about your God. But don't you be discouraged. Just like Moses was challenged with some false teachers. Timothy was faced with some false teachers. 
just like Timothy is faced with false teachers, we gonna be faced with false teachers. And if you ever get on social media, you listen to some of that stuff. I just have to, you know, what you do? You swipe, just go to the next one. You start listening, you go, mm -hmm. came here no more of that. But it's nothing but the enemy. But Paul reminds Timothy, he looked, look, just as God dealt with those who challenged Moses, God will deal with those who challenge you. Because he says here in the text, he said, those that, 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 that resisted the truth, those corrupt mind reprobate, he said that they proceeded no further. How many of you know that there are some times in your life that God will stop the enemy right in his tracks? Hey, 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 man, there's some folk that follow you around. There's some folk that every time you see them, they want to challenge you about the word of God. Then all of a sudden, you see them one day and they ain't challenging you no more. God has a way of stopping the enemy in his tracks. So that's why we should not be discouraged. God, the enemy will put some what I call stumbling blocks. To challenge your walk with God. And I'm, I'm moving to my next point. But if, if you ever stumbled before. And, and, and I'm talking about. Well, like I said I'm from the country. We used to run in the woods all the time. And you trip over a limb. And stumble and fail. Sometimes the enemy will put things in your life. It'll make you stumble. Look DJ. Sometimes it even make you fall. But ain't it good to know. That God will reach down and pick you up when you fall. Put you back on track and say, now get back to running again. Because all the enemy wants to do is make you fall and stay down. So he wants you to get down and wallow while you're down in the mess. Wants you to be down there. I can't get up like the commercial. I've fallen and can't get up. I can get up. Long as I got Jesus, I can get out of whatever happens in my life. I don't care what I've done, what I do, I can come out as long as I got Jesus. Just look, don't you be discouraged. Sometimes I'm, I'm talking to folk now. Don't even be discouraged by religious folks. And there's a difference between religious folks and true believers. Scribes and Pharisees were religious folks. Jesus called them hypocrites, snakes, and vipers. But a real believer is somebody who ain't going to judge you because you fall. A real believer going to help you up out of the mess that you're in. Hmm. Religious folks want to tell you how. True believers want to show you how. Religious folk want to want you to see them. True believers want you to see Jesus. See, God sends these people in our lives so that we don't become discouraged when the enemy comes against us. So if we're going to pass this test of the difficult times, we can't allow foolish folks to discourage us. So don't get discouraged when difficult times come. Not only that, not only does he tell them not to get discouraged, Paul also, Paul also tells them that when these perilous times show up, he said, don't be distressed. Man, anybody ever felt like the weight of the world was on your shoulder? We sing it in songs, but th 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 that means that, man, I don't know how I'm going to get out. And, 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 and you like this sometimes. When, when, when it's so bad, you, you always, fall. you're leaning over the table. You're leaning over the car. You lean, you, you, you're not standing up straight because you, you're worried. It's like this thing is wearing you down physically and spiritually. But the Bible here is teaching us from Tim Paul to Timothy that you can't get distressed when things happen. And look why he said you can't. Look, look at verse num number nine. He says, uh, I'm sorry, verse number 10. He says, look, boy, he says, you, you have known my doctrine. You, you, you know my manner of life. 
You know my purpose. You've known my faith. Timothy, you've known my, my, my long suffering. You know my love. You've known my patience. You know all the trouble that I went through. You know my afflictions that I had in Antioch. You know my troubles I had in Iconium and Lystra. All that I went through, he said, you know about it. So don't you be distressed. And to help him contend with what he was dealing with in his faith, he said, remember what I've been through. I need to tell somebody if there's somebody in your life that you know have been trusting God and you have seen what God has done in your life you better know that God is no respecter of person what God has done for them God is good enough and kind enough to do the same thing for you if they trusting in God all you got to do is trust in God Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1, he says, follow me as I follow Christ. Yeah. Paul says, my example that I give to you is what God gives to me. Yeah. And, I, and, and this part I love, Reverend, Reverend Henderson, he, 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 he said, you, you can't encourage somebody to keep going on if you ain't never really been through nothing. That, 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 that's one of them I can tell you what I heard. But I ain't really telling you what I know. But Paul ain't telling him what he heard. Paul is telling him, boy, you sitting here worried about what them folk doing. Talk. He said, remember? You remember what happened to me in Antioch? How them folk was jealous of my teaching? Remember what happened in Iconium? How they beat me because I preached the word? Remember how they stoned me in Lystra? But he said, in the middle of it all, God delivered me. Boy, thank you, Jesus. Here is my challenge to every one of y'all in here, and I, I'm glad I got one. I hope that you got a friend, a confidant, a prayer partner, somebody that is in your life that's done been through something. That when you get on the fence and you're trying to figure out, you're a little bit discouraged, you're a little bit worried, go find your prayer partner that you know made it through cancer. Go find your prayer partner that lost a child but still praising God. Go find that partner that lost a spouse but they still trust. Go talk to them. Ask them, how did you make it? Oh, and they'll tell you by the grace of God. Yeah, it gets rough, but you got to hold on any kind of way. See, I can say it easily if I ain't been through nothing. But if I really been through it, I can't stop there. I'll tell you what else he did. Not only did he heal me, but he gave me joy. Not only did he help me deal with the pain, but he put a smile on my face again. Why? Because when you trust him, he will do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or even think. So the Paul says, don't get distressed, but sometimes, even for us who got to walk with God, when you start getting a little bit distressed, look back where he brought you from. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. See, that, that get me right there because I have not forgotten who I used to be. I have not forgotten the fool that I used to be, and I know I was a fool by anybody's standards, but thank God that he changed me from who I used to be to where I am today. And when I get worried about what's going on, I look back. I'm, I'm, I'm moving to my last point. And whenever I look back, Willie, here's the conclusion that I come to. I'm glad I am where I am. Yeah. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Thank you I ain't walking them streets no more. Thank you that I ain't doing those things. Not that I'm perfect, but thank you for where you brought me from. Somebody better make that an application for yourself because you know you was on your road to hell. You know you ain't have no connection with God. You know that you didn't know who he was. But by his grace. Paul tells Timothy, I'm, I'm going to give my last one. He said, don't be discouraged. He said, but don't even be distressed. But finally he closed. He said, and don't be deceived. 
he, 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 he says it. Look what he says in verse number 13. He says, look, he said, boy, it's bad. You're going to suffer some things. But just look, hey, God brought me through. God will bring you through. He said, but, verse 13, contrastive conjunction. Yes, God is good, but evil men and seducers will become worse and worse. And they're going to deceive and they're going to be deceived. Paul uses what? English language would call a comparison and contrast. He, he, he uses what he went through with evil men. He says that you shouldn't be deceived by what you see. That, 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 that word deceive is uh, epiteo. It's a word means to describe people who cheat with empty words. What, what, what in the world is that, Pastor? Fast-talking folk. Scammers. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Tricksters. You can't lose with the stuff I use. Them type of folks, those who quick talkers. Paul told Timothy, he said, look, boy, don't you be deceived by all that false teaching. Because like I told you about that social media thing, boy, they'll take you all the way back to Africa. Yeah. I don't know what highway they're using to get there, but they'll get you back to Africa and tell you, you all wrong for believing in Jesus. <clears throat> Paul told Timothy, he said, boy, don't be fooled by the fancy talk and the false teachers. But y'all think it's bad now. Paul say it's going to get worse and worse. He said deceivers are going to keep deceiving and people are going to continue to be deceived. But ain't it good to know that the word of God is true. See, I don't have to prove to nobody that God's word is true. All I got to do is stand on the truth. My truth says that my word shall not come back void. My truth says that my word shall not fail. Now you can say what you want to say about what others believe, but the question becomes, what do you believe about your God? Fast talkers. Tricksters and everything that sound good ain't true. Can I get a witness here? I love how the Bible talks about the believers in Berea. When Paul went to Berea after he left Thessalonica, he went to Berea and he began to share the word. And the Bible says that those who were in Berea were better folks than those in Thessalonica because what they did when Paul taught the word, they sat down and studied it for themselves. What's that implication? When folk tell you something, go find out for yourself. Don't take everything that everybody tells you. Don't be deceived by words that people say and fancy talk. Paul puts it this way in Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Beware of those who spoil you through, uh, through philosophy and feign deceit. Using big words and fancy talk. See, the devil... Never get tired of lying. He never get tired of cheating. And he never gets tired of deceiving. Even Revelation 12 and 9 says that he's a deceiver of the whole world. And how many of you know that there's an enemy that wants to deceive you? There's an enemy that wants your day to get so bad. That you turn around and say, my God has left me all by myself. There's a deceiver that wants you to think that God can't supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. But here is my word for you today. Instead of being discouraged, distressed, 
or deceived, Paul gives an answer in verse 14. He says, but continue thou in the things that you have learned and have been assured of, knowing whom thou has learned of. In essence, Mount Calvary, keep walking in what you know to be true. I ain't gonna, I'm, done. I'm pretty much done, Willie. Um, what we do, what we preach, might not be popular, but it's true. And not all, Mother, it might not always be exciting. But it's true. Jesus says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. God is not interested in deceiving us, God is not interested in causing us to be distressed. God is not even interested in causing us to be discouraged. But in essence, what God is interested in is us staying in his word. Because when you get discouraged, read God's word. Because he said, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. When you get discouraged, he's, you'll read, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you think somebody is trying to deceive you, remember that he says that God is not a man, that he should lie. So you can be encouraged, motivated when you stay in God's word. But in order to get in his word, you need something to help you. Over 2,000 years ago, God says, I'm sending a solution. God, a solution to what? I'm sending a solution to your troubled days. I'm sending a solution to your perilous times. I'm sending a solution for when folk talk about you. I'm sending a solution for when you get discouraged, when you feel depressed. 2,000 years ago, he says, I'm sending my son. And when he comes, because I know you and I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb, I already knew what concerns you were going to have when you got here. So before you were ever incarnated in the flesh, he put in Jesus everything that we would need to make it when trouble happens in our lives. So he came, led him up a hill called Calvary. But the only way for you to get this thing is he had to take our place. But ain't it good to know he took our place before we ever got here? It's like he made the way straight before I ever got here. He, 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 he even gave the answer before the question was ever asked. Because he knew us. Hung him on a cross. Nailed him in his hands nailed him in his feet and Philippians puts it this way that all of my sins were nailed to the cross with Jesus so I'm not worried about what's going to happen because everything that's wrong has already been nailed and when he hung there never said a mumbling word but then the father did something that no man could ever take 
He took the sins of the entire world. Past, present, and future. He took all of those sins at one time and placed them on his sinless son. And the father turned his back. And Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because the father is too holy to look upon sin. But Jesus said, God, my father is finished said he laid his head in the locks of his shoulder and he died for me he died for you laid him in a grave but three days later the father said I will keep my word and the father rose his son from the dead and when Jesus rose, he said, all power is in my hand. Power on earth and power in heaven. And this is the shouting part. I got the power to control your discouragement. I got the power to control those who try to deceive you. But he says, the only thing I ask you to do is stick with me because one day I'm coming back for you that where I am there you may be also so Mount Calvary my word to you stick with God when you're dealing with your difficult days amen amen, amen. come on and give God praise I'm going to ask if we would stand to our feet as we open the doors of the church we extend Christian discipleship we want to give you that opportunity to give your life to Christ you can come to him any way you want to all you got to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is the son of God and the word says, you shall be saved. Does not matter what you've done. Does not matter where you've been. The Bible says that God knows all about you. And you are beautifully and wonderfully made. But he wants a relationship with you. And even now, whatever you need, all you have to do is put it in God's hand. So if you know you've never given your life to Christ, you've never confessed him as your Lord and Savior, why don't you do it today? Why don't you step out on faith and say, Lord, I want to give my life to you. And please understand what the word of God says. Jesus says that if you would be ashamed to own me before men, he says, I'm going to be ashamed to own you when I get before my heavenly father. So it ain't about what people think. This is about your personal relationship with Jesus. If you know you don't have one, don't worry about what people going to say. Just come on. Just step out on faith. Maybe, maybe you already know that. Got a relationship with God. I know. I die, I'm going to heaven, but I don't have a church home. And I need somewhere that I can serve, somewhere that I can worship, somewhere that I can carry out what God has put in me. Why don't you come join up with us? We are not perfect, but we're being perfected by God. If you're looking for a church home, come on. No man is an island within himself. You don't have to be out there by yourself. God has created us for fellowship. And if you're looking for a church family, join up with us.
Because the word says it this way, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And God just needs a few good workers. Oh, saying time is winding up. And it's time for us to serve. And even if you're joining us virtually, you can click on that QR code, fill out the information, somebody will get back with you. Whatever it is, however way you come, just come while you have time. Would there be one? Would there be one? All church and all save, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Everybody, right? I am going to treat everybody right. I am going to treat everybody right until I die. Oh, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. That's an old one. Y'all know that song. Why don't y'all sing? Said I will trust. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I church say amen Mount Calvary God bless you I pray that you would leave here today knowing that if you would stick with God God will stick with you times may change but God never changes your situation may get rough but it's never too rough for God so as Paul told Timothy, stick with that which you know to be true. And I promise you that God will bring you through any situation you have. Amen. Amen. Thank you to all of our visitors for being here today. Again, pray that God will bless you to be with us at the next appointed time. And thank you for being with us and your presence has been a blessing. Thank you, Mount Calvary. Love y'all so much. Amen. It's good to fellowship. It's good to worship. And it's good to praise the name of the Lord. And if all hearts and minds are clear, let us all stand in the presence of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad. I know how to make it through my perilous times. Amen. Let us sing our closing song. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the Shake somebody's hand while we sing that last verse. Oh, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this hour, Lord, of fellowship and worship. Thank you for your holy word and the encouragement of your Holy Spirit. Now, God, I pray that you will continue to bless those that are bereaved, bless those whose heart are heavy. Lord, even bless our sick and our shut-in, for we know that you're still in the healing business. As we prepare to be dismissed, God, go before us. Lord, take care of us as we travel up and down the dangerous highways. Lord, let no hurt nor danger come in to us as we travel to our final destination and God I pray that you would let your will be done in our lives for we belong to you and now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy to the only wise God our Father be glory majesty dominion and power both now henceforth and forevermore and we all can sing together Amen. 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 Thank God and
you are dismissed. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Bless you.